Uh, Lord Moncton, um, we're about to go to break, but there's so much happening. I've got all my questions, but what is most important on your battle board as you look at the whole uh, array of our forces growing, the enemy's forces uh, vanquished on many levels, but regrouping like serpents? Well, of course, they still intend to take democracy and freedom away forever, and President Obama and the administration will do everything they can to make sure that the U.N green global government is cemented into place so that your constitution will no longer matter and so that freedom, democracy, prosperity will be gone forever. When I went to Bonn recently for the uh, UN conference to plan for the next conference, which as you rightly mentioned is in Cancun in Mexico this December, the follow-on from the collapsed Copenhagen conference last December, they were still issuing copies of the September the 15th draft of the Copenhagen Treaty, the draft that didn't make it to Copenhagen, which lays out in 186 pages the program for a world government with powers to suspend and control and set the rules of all formerly free markets, which would, of course, disappear, the powers of enormous taxation, and, you know, you really can't take much more taxes than you've already got here in the United States, and then also powers of intervention in not only the environmental but the economic affairs of all nations directly over the heads of their elected representatives. And, of course, will this world government be elected? Does the word election, democracy, ballot or vote or any such word occur anywhere in the 186 pages of this blueprint for the end of democracy worldwide? No, of course it does not. Lord Moncton, we're going to come right back with a long segment, break down the enemy blueprints that time and time again, by the grace of God and good spies, continue to fall into our hands on a weekly basis and all the new scandals absolutely proving systematic, organized fraud by the collectivist parasites to push their green new world order. He's the T-Rex of political talk. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Christopher Moncton is our guest, probably the leading uh, crusader with the most accurate information of the last 15 plus years, fighting the Green New World Order, as the UN calls it, in its internal documents. For those that just joined us, Lord Moncton is in Washington today for a huge Tea Party event starting 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. in front of the Washington Monument. You cannot miss it. Sir, flesh this out because, I mean, walk through this world government they're setting up. These incredible documents that continue to get leaked and, and, and declassified and, and stolen by some uh, that are being put out, uh, I mean, really gives us a picture and lets us know there's no longer any denial. This is open global tyranny. And we now have the head of the Gaia movement uh, over in England last week in the London Guardian calling for a global dictatorship, saying we can't have freedom. The people are, quote, too stupid. We must have rationing. I mean, these are open tyrants, even Hitler. And the, and the communists and, 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 and other despots were not this open, uh, selling tyranny as if it's mother's milk. That's a wonderful phrase, selling tyranny as if it's, as if it's mother's milk. I must remember that one. Uh, that'll do well in speeches, I think. Uh, I think you're quite right. There is an extraordinary failure of will on the part of the peoples of formerly democratic nations like Britain, for instance, which now lives under the dictatorship of the European Commissars. And, of course, it's therefore very easy now for people like the leader of the Gaia movement to come out and say, we want dictatorship, because, of course, we've already got dictatorship in Europe. And we've already got cap and tax, because, hey, we weren't asked about it. None of our legislators were asked about it. It was imposed by the European dictatorship. And we all had to salute and obey. And we had no say in the matter. Now, the great thing about the United States of America, and I'm speaking here in Washington, D.C., on tax day, is that the United States is different because it has a constitution. And the constitution at Article 1, Section 1, says this. It says, all legislative power herein granted shall be vested in the Congress of the United States, which shall consist of a Senate and House of Representatives, Full point. Now, 
that means there is no dictatorship here for as long as the people of the United States are willing to keep themselves free. And that, I think, is the significance of the Tea Party movement, which came from nowhere a little over a year ago. The grassroots suddenly decided they were going to stand up and be counted. And I know that President Obama and the other world government wannabes are saying that this is astroturf that is paid for by fossil fuel industries or other wicked, evil capitalists who want to keep the world free and prosperous. But the fact is, this is a stirring of popular opinion, such as has probably not been seen in the United States since that day in 1773, when your forefathers decided to pour tea into Boston Harbor. Now, I've got a tip for you. Try pouring it into the teapot next time. It tastes better that way. <laughs> but remember this also. The British tea tax was thousands of times cheaper than Obamacare and millions of times cheaper than what would happen to the United States if any part of the cap and tax regime now being wriggled and struggled through the Senate were actually to be passed. And, and Obama... Obama is separately saying he's going to have the EPA enforce it regardless. That is open tyranny. And uh, Club of Rome behind eco-fascist purge to criminalize climate skepticism, an article at prisonplanet.com, quoting Club of Rome members saying we should all be arrested if we criticize anthropogenic global warming. I mean, they are openly saying arrest us they've called for your arrest previously when in truth they're the ones that have been caught committing this fraud and these crimes and you called for al gore to be arrested yes indeed i, I think the real criminals who are uh, i call them the global warming profiteers and in al gore's case the racketeers where he is now ignoring the order of a high court judge in the united kingdom that found 11 serious nine serious errors i should say in his mawkish sci-fi comedy horror movie uh, he deserves to go to jail for peddling a false prospectus in his investment management corporation which is devoted to so-called green investments all of which are of course collapsing as the world fails to warm up anything like as fast as the UN and its fellow travellers in the climate extremist movement have predicted. But uh, this idea that we should be arrested simply for saying what we believe to be the scientific truth, that is the same sort of noise that Hitler and his supporters made in the early 1930s before Hitler was swept to power. The idea was that if everybody else could be silenced, then only one point of view would be allowed to be put. And that's what they're trying to do now. And why is this? It's actually not because they think they're going to get away with it. It's because they think they're not going to get away with it. They are now becoming desperate. Opinion polls in those countries where there is still freedom via the ballot box to decide your policies, and that means not Britain, not the dismal European dictatorship, but it does mean Canada, it does mean Australia, above all it does mean the United States of America. In those countries, each new opinion poll says that um, people are believing less and less in this extremist nonsense coming up by the climate extremists. They no longer believe it, they're no longer prepared to vote for it, they're no longer prepared to pay for it. They do not want it, and the global warming profiteers are in desperation trying to call for the final solution to silence the likes of me who dare to raise elementary questions like the one I'm going to raise now, which is how much global warming will a given increase in carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere cause? The answer in today's atmosphere, we now know by measurement, very very, very little. It will cause some, but only about a quarter, a fifth, maybe even a seventh or a tenth of the UN's central estimate, and therefore that is harmless and tiny and beneficial. In fact, if we could double the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere, the yield of some staple crops would go up by as much as 40%. CO2 is actually good for you. It's not harmful, but the reason why they want to stamp it out 
is that if they can pretend it's dangerous, it gives them the excuse to interfere and control every aspect of economic and political life and freedom in the nations of the West. Well, and selectively... to say to anybody in your Congress who supports those points of view, this is what's going to happen to you. We will vote them out. Absolutely. Uh, here, here on that point, uh, as you say, they're getting desperate. We're gaining in an index of polls as much as two, three points per week. Uh, just in the last few months, the 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 exposure of these these criminals, these control freaks, trying to seize our society through false guilt and and and, and uh, fear mongering, apocalyptic doom, is being exposed. But as you said, they're getting even more vicious. Everywhere Al Gore goes, he's now hounded about the Arctic and Antarctic ice sheets exploding in size. He's being hounded about 10 years of temperature going down, 15 uh, of it uh, slowing. Uh, he, uh, everywhere he goes, crowds are chasing him and, and, and you know, trampling him basically politically down into the dirt. And so how do you see them counter-striking? I think as far as Gore is concerned, he's a very sad, lonely figure now. He was the darling of the hour in 2007 when he got his Mickey Mouse Nobel Prize for peace. Uh, he was the darling when he got his Mickey Mouse Oscar for the best sci-fi comedy horror movie. I mean, he was, everybody thought he was just the bee's knees. Now that they realize that just about everything he said is false from top to bottom. The British High Court saying that the Armageddon scenario that he depicts is not based on any scientific view. He is now finished. Oh, well, he's, of course, he's made a, hundred, a few hundred million in the meantime, so he'll be all right in his retirement in his Tennessee mansion, which consumes 20 times as much electricity and emits 20 times the carbon footprint of any average house in the United States. Uh, he's fine, but he's now and irrelevance. And I think the way we're going to take it back is starting with the tax day rallies all over uh, the United States today, and especially the one here in Washington. We are going to put those in Congress who have drifted along with this garbage on notice that if any of them ever again votes for anything to do with global warming, they will be flung out of office forever. In the present state of the U.S. economy, where the debt from the year dot to the year 2004 was, I think, $4 trillion, it's now $14 trillion, and Obama has managed to add another $4 trillion in just the last six months. Um, that kind of flagrant overspending, if he now proposes to increase that overspending still further, with all this global warming rubbish, then I think the ordinary taxpayer, the ordinary working guy who might have made the mistake of voting for what I'm going to call what it is, a communist administration, will no longer vote for it or for, or for Obama. And let's just look at the effect of these enormous tax-increasing measures on Obama's own standing. Well, stay there, when Lord Moncton. We've got to go to break. We're going to come back and we'll go over that. Then we'll talk about all the new scandals filling in other pieces of the puzzle, clearly, in 2020 vision, showing massive, organized racketeering and what type of criminal action, uh, what type of criminal charges need to be launched to bring these scallywags to justice. Scienceandpublicpolicy.org is the website of Lord Moncton. Excellent information there, an invaluable research and education tool. We'll put it up on screen during the break here at PrisonPlanet.tv. And for radio listeners, it's linked up on our websites. We'll be right back. Stay with us. The establishment, the greenies, love to sit up there like they're God and tell us how guilty and evil we are for having cars and homes and swimming pools and factories. Meanwhile, they use these laws to shut down our factories and move them to China and India. They know exactly what they're doing, and they must be fully routed. This cancer cannot be uh, left anywhere. And they've committed such incredible crimes. They've reached for the world through this green tyranny. Lord Moncton, I mean, do you agree with me that we can't just discredit them? They've committed crimes. They must be brought to justice. That, I think, is the fairest thing to do with people who have 
terrified children in schools, lied and lied and lied again in official publications, invented a threat where one doesn't exist, magnified it where one might exist, and generally um, worked the world up into a fervor of terror over what turns out to be a complete non-problem. And how do we know it is a non-problem? Well, we know it by measurement. The UN and its fellow travellers in the climate extremist green movement have been using what are called computer models to make their predictions with. Now, these are essentially a whole lot of zitty teenagers sitting in dark rooms with too many bagels and burgers, picking their zits, picking their noses, pecking at the keyboards, and making stuff up. That's how the UN does the science of climate. But the real way to do the science of climate, like any other science, is not by modelling, which is of only limited use and should never be used as the primary tool, but by measurement. If I took my tie off and said, how long is this tie? You could ring round all the manufacturers and you could say, how long are the ties you make? How many of them do you sell? You put that into a computer model and make a guess, which would probably be wrong. Or you could say, give me your tie and a tape measure and I will measure it which is going to give you the more reliable measurement. Of course, the measurement is. That's going to give you the answer. And by measurement, it has been established over and over and over again in the last few years, with papers coming out as recently as just uh, a couple of months ago, showing that the outgoing radiation that is supposed to be being trapped down here in the Earth's atmosphere is escaping out to space very much as it always did. That means it's not staying down here to cause warming. That means the warming effect of CO2, though it is not non-existent, is very small, harmless, and beneficial. And we know they've lied about the Earth. And we know the Earth has actually been getting colder and that they hid that decline in premeditated fraud. Well, I think they were very naughty. What they were trying to do in that particular email from the Climate Gate emails that are uh, exchanged between the leading mad scientists of the world who have been stirring up this scare is they were trying to hide the fact that although temperatures uh, were shown to be going up in, in the real world by measurement, the proxy, the so-called bristlecone kind pine proxies they were using to try and reconstruct past temperatures, when they came to try and reconstruct the temperatures of the present time, appeared to show that temperatures... Uh, should have been falling. And it was this mismatch between the real temperature record and the temperature record as reconstructed in that brief period where we had a real temperature record to check it against that showed that the, real, the, the, the record of, of past temperatures where we didn't have instruments was entirely unreliable. It was that that they were trying to conceal. And they were trying to conceal it deliberately. It was clearly intended to be dishonest. And the extraordinary thing is that first the House of Commons, then the University of East Anglia whitewashed this away and said that nothing incorrect, nothing wrong had been done. Here are scientists lying to each other and to us in the hope of persuading us to spend trillions upon trillions in shutting down the economies of the West. Notice that you don't hear these green campaigners saying that China should clean up its filthy, polluting uh, coal-fired power stations where they haven't bothered to put the fly ash trappers and they haven't put the new circulating fluidized bed techniques into the combustion chambers. All of these things they need to modernize, they can well afford to modernize it, but they don't do it because they don't care about the pollution they're causing. Do the Greenies campaign about where the real pollution is going on in China, in India, in Indonesia, in Russia, in Brazil, in South Africa? Do they heck? Their intention is to close down the countries of the world which are the environmentally cleanest because these are not environmentalists, they are communists. And their aim is to destroy the West. And they've said that. I mean, we've got the head climatologist at NASA, we've got Maury Strong, we've got Ted Turner saying we must destroy industrialized society, but only in the West. I mean, a, a crime against humanity, and of course you go over the numbers of how many people will die in the third world under the carbon regime that was in the Copenhagen Treaty. Uh, we'll talk about that, plus all the new scandals that have come out. And I'm not talking about the stuff from a month ago with the Himalayas.
where they used a photography student's report to claim they were melting. No, I'm talking about all the new stunning information coming out. Straight ahead with Lord Christopher Monkton. Long segment coming up. Stay with us. Christopher Moncton, your questions for him, 1-800-259-9231. Don't forget, coming up in an hour and a half, we're premiering the new film, Invisible Empire, New Order Defined, exposing these criminals. Jason Burmes' new film premiering at PrisonPlanet.tv. You can order the DVD at Infowars.com. They're now shipping next week. Police State 4 comes out on Wednesday. You can pre-order that now. Lord Moncton, so much to go over here. Uh, I can't even keep track of it. Every day a new scandal. Every day it's proven that all their science is fraud, premeditatedly. And then this one, Financial Times of London, global warming graph attack by study. A key piece of evidence, climate change science, was slammed as exaggerated on Wednesday by UK's leading statistician in a vindication of claims that global warming skeptics have made for years, namely Lord Moncton, who first exposed the hockey stick. And now we know that man has been involved with Jones and others at the core group engaging in this, uh, what can only be called racketeering. So let's go over this and the countless other uh, scandals that have come out. Because it's positive this is all coming out, but it's almost like they're coming out too quick. We don't have time to take each one and get it out to the public. It's, it is quite extraordinary how uh, in the last few months, since the Climate Gate emails were first revealed, there's been a kind of breaking of the logjam, and scientists who for years have been wanting to write papers saying what nonsense this is are now finding the courage to do so. It's very interesting, and, and this, this statistical report from the UK is very significant because the UK has been the most true believing of all the... Uh, sappy world governments on this issue, and uh, so much so that in, 90, in 2004, when the Russians under Vladimir Putin wanted to get a briefing for their Academy of Sciences on the global warming scare, it was the British government they asked to send a delegation to do the briefing, and Sir, Sir David King went across with those people. However, um, Dr. Ilarionov of the Russian Academy of Sciences who is a formidable mind, is also very careful. And he got together half a dozen sceptics, one of whom told me the story of what happened. Um, so David King began coming out with the usual string of lies about how the climate was doomed, etc., etc. Uh, fact after fact was simply incorrect. And eventually, Professor Paul Reiter, who was one of those who'd been invited, the world expert on malaria, who says that uh, global warming will not affect the spread of malaria pretty much at all, he went along and he stood up looking. He said, it's no good to David King. These facts are simply not right. And he began challenging to David King. And in fact, David King was furious. He had never faced such a challenge before. He stormed out of the meeting, taking the British delegation with him, leaving the field entirely clear for the sceptics, who then gave a marvellous, thorough, comprehensive briefing to Dr. Ilarionov, who, in summing up that meeting, in just three pages of text, gives one of the best summaries of why global warming is not and can never be a global crisis that any National Academy of Sciences has ever delivered. But here's what happened next. Tony Blair met Vladimir Putin at one of these endless world government summits of the G8 or the G20 or the G77 or whichever piece of arithmetic you like. And he said, look, let's do a deal. If you agree to, see, uh, agree to say that global warming is terrible and shut up your Academy of Sciences, get it to say the opposite of what it believes to be true, I will let you into the World Trade Organization with most favored nation status. That's what goes on. There's no truth behind any of this. And as you, you're quite right, it's now very, very difficult to keep up with the endless tide of information about how it's the sun and it's the sea and it's the clouds, and as we're about to discover from Iceland, it's also volcanoes that really dominate the climate. Let me raise that. Let me raise that. I have a Twitter question uh, for you. It's uh, it's uh, says Lord Moncton, are they aware that the volcanic eruption in Iceland will decrease global temperatures? 
Uh, yes, they are aware of that because they know that if you get a really big eruption, it looks as though this one may come into that category. It's slightly early days yet, but if it carries on for a day or two more as it is, then yes, it will be a big one. Then that throws so much volcanic ash up. As you know, it shut down the whole of Europe and the Atlantic, and all fright flights in Britain are already grounded. Though, curiously, Reykjavik Air Airport, which is upwind of this, is still free for traffic. But um, when you get enough of that uh, volcanic ash getting up into the atmosphere, it stops the sunlight reaching the ground. And that causes global cooling of around half a degree, sometimes even one degree Celsius, but only for six months to a year, because eventually, of course, uh, the rain comes and the ash, which is heavier than the air, gradually falls back to the ground and provides very nice fertilizer for everybody's soil. Does no harm. Uh, and then the sunlight can get through much as usual again. However, what we did notice after the last really big eruption, which was Pinatubo in 1991, what then happened was that there was a temporary reduction in cloud cover following the year after that eruption and persisting for about a decade. And that, of course, caused an enormous increase in global temperature. So we may, paradoxically, as a result of this um, eruption, see a similar reduction in cloud cover again, and that will cause a temporary global warming that could be quite rapid. And, of course, this will allow the other side to blame it all on CO2. But, but it Lord Monckton, hold on. Couldn't we just pay Al Gore a couple billion and he would give us an indulgence and wave a, a magic wand and, and uh, make the volcanoes not erupt? Because, I mean, after all, Danny Glover and then a U.N. official uh, said that uh, the earthquake uh, in, in Haiti was caused uh, by global warming, and now they're claiming the Chilean earthquake uh, was, was caught. But, but, so if we just pay them some money, will they stop the earthquakes? Oh, just like that, yes. Al Gore has only to stretch out his hand and the entire world will stop spinning round. We'll all fly off. No, I mean, <laughs> of course, it's ridiculous. One knows perfectly well that global warming cannot possibly cause or have any connection with earthquakes. They are driven by a completely separate mechanism a long way below, below the Earth's surface, wholly disconnected from the climate above. And it is simple rubbish to try to suggest otherwise. Of course, you've noticed it's the fashion now that every kind of weather that is happening, you've just had the coldest winter on record in most of North America, and of course the warmest came straight out, the climate extreme said, oh yes, that's what we would expect from global warming. So here's the thing, we expect earthquakes from global warming, we expect warming from global warming, we expect cooling from global warming, we expect floods from global warming, we expect droughts from global warming. Hang on a moment. All we're really saying is that whichever direction the climate changes in, they're going to blame it on global warming. But that's my next point, Lord. Do with global Lord warming Moncton, or not? Lord Moncton, interrupt you because we've got limited time and these facts are so key. We know they've been caught in fraud. We know they have an agenda to control our lives and become kings over us. We understand that. And the general public's beginning to understand that. But for me, going back years, it's just the asinine level. I can go look up the federal government uh, numbers on polar bears, and they've gone from roughly 22,000 30 years ago uh, in our area of the world, in North America, to over 50,000. And so when Al Gore says the polar bears are all dying, we know it's a lie. When they say in the Arctic, penguins are dying because they're drowning. We know they're an aquatic bird. I mean, the level of asinine lying. But but the one I want you to talk about now, because we're showing video of this, both a 20-year time lapse and then this year's time lapse from satellites, we know the Arctic expanded. And this is admitted uh, by the greatest level in the last 30 years. That's admitted by NASA. And I'm showing a NASA satellite composite uh, right now of it growing this year. And then I've seen the environmental phonies on the news saying it's not true that the ice caps are melting. I mean, they are denying that the sun comes up in the morning. They are outrageous liars. It's extraordinary that on the polar bears, for instance, there were, there were only 5,000 worldwide in the 1940s. Now, depending on which survey you read, there are 25,000 worldwide, and you've seen one that says there are 50,000 just in North America. Um, and the fact is that that's not the profile of a species in imminent threat of extinction, is it? Likewise, the penguins, and of course in the Antarctic, the sea ice has actually been growing for 30 years. And I was talking to one of these true-believing scientists about that the other day, and he said, oh yes, but that's caused by catabatic winds. 
coming down off the Arctic ice, uh, off, the, uh, off the Antarctic ice cap and freezing the sea. And of course, yes, it is, because the, Ar the Antarctic has been getting cooler over the last 30 years as the records very plainly show. Though you won't see that reported in the mainstream media. But that's what I'm saying, Lord Monkin. It's the boldness. The I've never seen total contempt for the public, and, and I guess some of the public really are dumb as a box of rocks, to tell them the Arctic and Antarctic w are in danger of completely melting within the next five years, as Al Gore was just saying a few months ago at Copenhagen. I mean, it is an asinine fraud to tell school children that it's all melting when they know good and well it's getting bigger. Well, just to, to go to the Arctic and give you the latest figures, the beginning of the uh, spring ice melt in the Arctic began later this year than at any time since records began. That's the truth of the matter, because there's an awful lot of ice up there just now, and it will go back to more or less normal in the next few weeks, just as it always does. Then we'll see how it is in the summer, which will depend partly on the volcanic activity in Iceland, obviously. These things come and go. They're perfectly natural swings and roundabouts. But we know perfectly well that even if we were to lose a lot of ice in the Arctic, we've gained just as much in the Antarctic, so that global sea ice has shown virtually no trend whatsoever ever over the last 30 years since the satellite first began to record it reliably. So whatever else is going on, it isn't global warming that's causing the little bit of melting that did happen in the Arctic just for a few weeks only in the summer of 2007. And very nearly all of that summer minimum ice was restored in 2008 and still more again mm -hmm. in 2009. Those are the facts. Well, I know you challenge them on their phony science, but just the general propaganda that's given to the public, it's, it's very elementary. They point a camera on every news show during the spring and summer at a glacier that's being built up by rain and snow during the winter and fall, fall and winter. They show the glaciers collapsing, ice flows and icebergs that have always done this since we had ice caps and they say look it's melting i mean th even the reporters have to know they're involved in a premeditated fraud or are these reporters for lack of a better term mentally retarded it's even more of a fraud than you think because the most frequently shown picture of a large chump chunk of supposedly greenland glacial ice falling off into the sea is in fact taken from a glacier in south america which is a land-based glacier where it crosses a lake so it looks like the sea but actually it isn't and every five years this glacier goes right across the lake and dams the lake the water behind the lake which then builds up and bursts through causing enormous chunks of ice to come off what's interesting is that because there's been regional cooling over the last 30 years in that part of South America as well, that glacier that used to burst apart every five years is now bursting apart every two years because there's more and more ice coming across and blocking the lake. So that in, in itself is another spectacular lie. And to name another one of that kind, when Al Gore shows a picture of flying over what is supposed to be the melting Arctic ice, it is in fact a computer simulation and not the real thing. So everything that you're being shown, everything that you're being told about the supposed effect of supposed global warming is bogus. And even if it weren't bogus, the fact is we've had 300 years of global warming. It began, we can date it exactly thanks to the Central England Temperature Record, which is the earliest instrumental record in the world. It began in 1695, and in the next 40 years, the temperatures rose by 4 Fahrenheit degrees. That's one Fahrenheit degree uh, for every decade. It's not done that since, because in the whole of the 20th century, it only rose by one Fahrenheit degree. So the idea that somehow the increase in temperatures over the 20th century is something new, the idea that it was an unprecedented rate, is simply nonsense. And we know from the records we have going back 300 years that it is obvious and arrant nonsense. And yet, this is the kind of rubbish they go on peddling. They say, for instance, that the warming since 1950 can only be explained if you assume that CO2 was the major cause. No, that's not correct. All of the warming, and I mean all the warming since 1950, can be explained by the temporary and naturally occurring reduction in cloud cover that happened between 1983 and 2001 when we had satellites up there to watch it. And that 
blows into into smithereens the the principal conclusion of the UN's most recent climate report in 2007, where they said that we were responsible for most of the warming since 1950. That is simply a straight lie, and they knew it, because they actually cited the paper in which it was revealed uh, just how much extra sunshine had hit the Earth between 1983 and 2001 as a result of that reduction in clouds. And finally, sir, to simplify this for some people out there who may not be following us, they're now moving away from saying global warming, because that's been exposed as a fraud, to climate change and saying stabilizing our climate as if we're not supposed to have seasons. I mean, if they had their way in 100 years, they'll have children cowering under their, their beds at night and saying, Mommy, the conspiracy theorist down the road, you know, is saying that we've always had seasons, uh, but the government says that seasons are unnatural and we've got to pay all these taxes to try to battle, you know, changes in temperature. <laughs> I think that's a great point. I think the fact is that the change in temperature in any one region of the planet between the summer and the winter is something like 20 times what's going to happen even if we get a little bit of global warming over the next 100 years, which we may. But it's going to be so small and so insignificant that it's not going to do any harm to anyone. And that's really the simple bottom line. I'm sorry if that last answer sounded a little bit too complicated, but it's really quite simple. If you get a naturally occurring reduction in cloud cover, fewer clouds between the sun and the ground, more sunlight hits the ground, and the ground gets warmer, and it gets warmer naturally, and nothing whatever to do with CO2. It's really as simple as that. And we can do a simple calculation based on that to work out what the warming effect of CO2 over those 18 years from, two, from 1983 to 2001 could possibly have been. And the answer is there's virtually no room for it to have had any influence at all. And, of course, since the end of 2001, we've had rapid, significant global cooling anyway. Lord Moncton, I'm going to skip this final break. We've only got 10 minutes left with you. Again, you're always extremely gracious to give us so much time. I know you're in demand globally, but that's another indicator of the good news is that you were wanted you know, in front of crowds of tens of thousands and television and radio and TV 24 hours a day, more than you could ever do, and we're appreciative of your great stamina. Uh, that I can only liken to Ron Paul and, and the amount of stamina I've seen that he's had uh, out there fighting many other forms and permutations of tyranny. But I want to take some final calls here. And, and, and I wasn't being patronizing saying, you know, please simplify it. I just wanted to boil down for people just how elementary this is. I mean, I don't claim to be that smart, and this has been blaringly clear to me just because I understood history. I mean, I've read history about sometimes in Europe it'd be freezing for 100 years, and sometimes for 200 years it'd be super hot. And it's in the Chinese history, it's in all the histories, and, and we just know this is a fraud. We know that we had the Bronze Age because temperature went up by over 10 degrees, much warmer than the last you know, warming period we've seen in the last 50 years. And it's just, it's just so ridiculous. Uh, let's talk to MD in Maine. You're on the air with Lord Christopher Moncton. His website is scienceandpublicpolicy.org. Go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, Lord Moncton, welcome to America. And uh, this is a question for you and Alex on a uh, financial uh, question. Uh, specifically, we know that the pension funds in America are being targeted uh, by the uh, by the government as a way to uh, back up the treasuries. But my specific question is: 401ks and IRAs are those on the radar screen as well? And will those be targeted? And if so, how soon would that happen? All right, MD, MD. Specifically, I'm now reminded Lord Moncton going into break tried to get into the financial ruination that we're seeing through the Obama collectivist takeover. And yes, it is in Bloomberg. They're looking at taking your pension funds. Lord Moncton. Yes, I think you've got to realize that so bankrupt is America now at the federal level. And so wicked is the sheer scale on which the present administration has ramped up spending artificially in the short term so as to make our children, our children's children, and their children in turn pay for the self-indulgence of this, and I'm going to call it again what it is, a communist administration. But yes, you are going to find that every uh, penny that you've got, which isn't hidden under the mattress, any penny that you've got that they can find, 
They're going to come after it. Your pensions are not going to be safe under this administration. Anyone who has had the providence and the thrift to save for his or her old age is going to find the sticky-fingered government coming in there and at first increasing the taxes on it and then arbitrarily confiscating it altogether and saying, as they did with health care, we are in the federal government are going to provide your pensions and in order to do that, we want you to hand over all your pension money. There is a real danger that an administration as wild and as fiscally irresponsible and as monetarily incompetent as this one and as malevolent towards the American people as this one has shown itself repeatedly to be will indeed come after your pension. Nothing and no one is safe. And my three magic words I repeat again, vote them out. And, and you were trying to talk about health care earlier. I do want to take a few more calls, but specifically, you're in England with the National Health Service. The VA runs health care here for veterans, the worst health care in the world when government has a hand in it. Uh, in 60 seconds, your breakdown on government-run health care. Just don't go there is the short answer. Uh, it's been an enormous failure in Britain. It was supposed to be the envy of the world. Absolutely nobody has copied the way the British does it until now. And now here we have Obamacare. He didn't get away with the public option, or option full-blown. What he's done instead is to defer to the huge companies and corporations that run health care and make sure that they are going to make vastly increased profits by forcing people into, into paying for health care via state-run exchanges. The whole mess is going to be a bureaucratic nightmare. It's going to cost a fortune. Health care standards will plummet. And already I know of several of your leading doctors who are simply going to up sticks and get out. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, you just heard intense veritas, the truth. This is global corporations, big health care, coming in and robbing you. Government keeps half of it. The corporations keep the other. They lower your standard of care. Well said, Lord Moncton. Let's talk to Brian in California. You're on the air. Hello, Alex. Um, I'm here with my sweet and lovable wife, uh, who's a major contributor. Uh, I made an ob observation some time ago um, that the signing of the Federal Reserve Act was exactly to the day, 99 years after the signing of the Treaty of Ghent. Now, if you take exactly 99 years to the day after the Federal Reserve Act, you, you land on the 2012 doomsday. My question right, listen, is Lord Brian, Moncton. That's, a, that's another numerological subject I don't really get into, but we're taking questions for Lord Moncton. Thank you. George in Connecticut, you're on the air. Lord, Lord Moncton, I want to ask you a question for Alex. I'm sure he doesn't want to bother to ask you, but he's been attacked by a number of people in the press, and some of these press uh, reach England, and you know that the system in England would, would clip these uh, these birds' uh, wings pretty quickly, especially when they're, they're uh, saying he's threatening violence because he's telling the truth. Can you give him some good advice on how... Well, how well to, let how me to... fill Lord Moncton in. They've had Newsweek, Time Magazine, even the London Guardian, actually, saying I'm calling for violence when I've never done anything like that, but they're also saying that about the Tea Parties. They're also saying that about Rick Perry. I mean, they're saying it about everybody, and now, I don't know if Lord Moncton saw this, but the AP report two days ago, the Democrats have been caught with fake inward signs, and they've been caught infiltrating Tea Parties trying to uh, make us look bad. That's right. This is a very classic communist technique. It was done by Hitler, who of course was a national socialist, which is another kind of communism. Uh, it was done by the communists when they were taking over in Russia. It's an absolutely typical extreme left-wing technique. They try to discredit those whom they fear, knowing that they can rely upon the liberal tendencies of the mainstream media not to bother to ask the right questions. It's a very good question that your, your caller raises, and my advice is, of course, you should never advocate any kind of violence, nor, Alex, would you ever have done so. Well, we've so, done the opposite, but, I mean, when we, especially George Soros, he, he's got like eight different publications that every week just lie. I mean, I could sue them, but I don't have the time. What do you well, do I, when I, people... I don't think it's ever worth suing these people. I think, I think the answer is just to go on speaking the truth, speaking it gently, and it's rather like uh, what Glenn Beck has been saying on his wonderful program on Fox News. He says the hammer of nonviolence has to hit the anvil of truth. 
and that's the way he's been putting it. And uh, I've met uh, many Tea Partiers today. I went to uh, a Liberty briefing just this morning and addressed it briefly. A wonderful crowd of people. Not one of them was advocating violence, except one infiltrator who was in there to find out what I was saying so that he could go away and report it to Green Central Casting and they could look it up and try and pick holes in it later. Everybody else was entirely... So peaceful. you've gone through this too. I mean, I mean, you have them trying to set you up. Oh, they're always doing that. But I pay no attention to it. And you just have to go on quietly. I'm just quietly getting on with my scientific research. I pop up from time to time and, and uh, publish the results. I'm just about to publish a major, major paper on this business of the effect of clouds on climate, which shows perfectly well that CO2 has virtually nothing to do with anything. And that's the way I do it. We just quietly publish the science in the peer-reviewed journals, let people read it there and make of it what they will. That's the way science is done. And I don't mind how many sticks and stones they try to throw, how many, uh, but words certainly won't hurt me. And the thing is, just be courageous, carry on speaking the truth. The truth in the end, as we are told in the Bible, will prevail. Absolutely. Uh, Lord Moncton, um, we've only got about 45 seconds left. I appreciate your time. Scienceofpublicpolicy.org. I know you say as soon as you're done defeating these people, you're going to write a book. We look forward to having you on to cover that. And, and just so much continues to happen. Uh, and again, 5 uh, to 10 p.m. Uh, Eastern today in front of the Washington Monument. Lord Moncton and others will be there. So definitely uh, we look forward to watching those videos online here from Austin and other areas of the planet from your eloquent speech. Thank you so much for your time. File your tax return on time by the close of play today. And God bless America. <laughs> Take care. Lord Moncton, thank you.